Today I'm going to show how to do an intarsia cable. Here's one I did with just two colors, and now I'm going to demonstrate one that has three colors. We'll start by organizing the supplies. I'm going to do blue in my row, and then a plum and white cable, and then some more blue. And that's going to be my intarsia design. I have to have a separate ball for each section of the pattern as it goes across the machine. You'll see as I work how that turns out. The next supply I need is a clothespin for each color of yarn, so I've got those piled here. And then I need these sinkers. These come with the intarsia carriage and I need one for each color of yarn. So I've kind of got my supplies organized and I'm about to start. I've knitted some rows with this dark blue. If this were a sweater, for instance, that might be the ribbing. And I'm cutting that yarn. I am going to work with yarn that is on the floor, and I'm going to stop using the regular carriage. So I'm taking that completely off the machine. Put the yarn in into the sinker using a tapestry needle. You just sew in and out of these holes as many times as you want. And you sew more for a slippery yarn and less for a yarn that's a little bit harder to pull through. And test it by hanging it up. You don't want it to just fall through, but it will slide. These are really great for their intended purpose of controlling the yarn on an intarsia project. You will need to put a sinker on each end of yarn. So here I am with the, the plum colored yarn threading my tapestry needle, getting a sinker and sewing it with the yarn. And I'll do all four colors and come back. You have to start by doing a setup row. You put the intarsia carriage on the machine, set the tension, and yes, you have to do a separate gauge swatch for the intarsia carriage. You need to make sure that your gauge matches the rest of the garment. And you slide it. If you're going to start on the left, and I'm going to start on the left, I need to put the carriage on the right and bring it over to the left. It'll put all of these stitches into position for intarsia. The intarsia position is upper working position with the stitch behind the latch and the hook open. Now my leftmost yarn is going to be the dark blue. And to hang it on the needles, the way I like to do it, is put a close pin on the loose end and then put that hanging directly below the knitting and then put the other end into the needles that are going to be the dark blue. In my case, I'm going to go from the edge needle over to left needle number three, leaving two empty needles before zero. Now my second color is the plum, and I will put a clothespin on the end of the plum, and I'll install the plum on the next two needles. My third color is the white, put the clothespin on the white and put the white yarn on the next two needles. And my final color is the blue. This is another ball of blue. I've got a ball for each place in the row where the color is going to occur. And once again I hang it on its needles, needles numbered three right over to the end. These four needles in the middle are going to be my cable. Now I'm about to begin my first row, so I'm putting my row counter on 0, 0, 0. That'll help me keep track of when to do the cable. Now it's so simple. The intarsia carriage will knit these through and put the needles back in position for the next row. And there we go. It has knitted them through. You can see them knitted through on these center stitches the most easily. So to knit back, my pattern is to put the blue stitches over to needle three right. It's actually the same as the first row, but going the other direction. Then pick up the white yarn from behind the blue and put it over its two needles. Pick up the plum yarn 
from behind the white and put it over its two needles and finally hang the blue yarn from behind the, the plum over its needles and knit to the left. Now this is all very simple but you do have to be vigilant that your latches are always open. A closed latch will give you a dropped stitch so you'll want to check those and a cut credit card is a great way to do that. And I am being careful to always bring the yarn from behind. Now you might think that things will end up in a tangle below, but they don't because when you go one way, you twist in one direction. When you go the other way, you untwist. Row three. Same little design for my next row, which will be row four. and row four. Now I am using an intarsia carriage to do intarsia, but there's another way to do it if you don't have a carriage or no carriage is available for your machine. And I'm showing that in a new video coming up really soon. That's row five. This is row six. Row six is my last row before I cable because I'm going to cable after each six rows. Therefore, I'll be cabling when the row counter says six, and then when the row counter says 12, and then when it says 18, and so forth. That's six rows, so it's time to cable. When it's time to cable, you just use a two-prong transfer tool and put these two white stitches on the tool. That's needles number one and two on the right, and then the two plum stitches on the other tool. Bringing everything over to the right so you can put those plum ones on the right needles. And then bring the white ones to the left so that you can put them on needles one and two left, which are both closed and giving me trouble. Now, you have to position the stitches after the cable to continue your intarsia knitting. And the way to do that is to bring these out so the stitches are behind the latches and then back so that everything is lined up. Then it's time to lay in the yarn. Blue over to here. Now, we've cabled, so it's going to be white from here to here over these two needles and then the plum, of course, is after the white because it's going to be on these two needles. And then blue on over to the edge needle. And I was careful as I worked to make sure all my hooks were open. And that was row number seven. Now I'm going to continue as before. Seven. Put my plum over those two. Put my white over those two, my blue over the remaining needles, and knit to the left. And blue over those. Giving the yarn a little tug before I, I wrap it over its new spot. I don't want a loose spot between colors where the colors change. And this will be my row nine. Row 10 is the same, but of course going the other direction. When I bumped that needle with my thumb, I needed to straighten it back up so that these are all in a line. And I also needed to make sure that the latch was open. Row number 10. And row 11. And now for row 12.
double checking to make sure my latches were open. Now once row 12 is done, of course, I cable again. Now I'm going to keep going as before and make the sample so that you can see what we have. Here's my intarsia cable. I think you'll find this a really fun introduction to using your intarsia carriage. See how on the front we've got a nice crisp cable and then on the back we don't have floats. The pieces of color or I should say sections of color, almost appear to be stitched together along the edges. And you can get a really nice even tension with this and find that it's not hard at all to do.